The S&P 500 lifting to a new intraday record high above 5200, the prior intraday high around 5189. Of course, any rise today is a new closing high. You see the Nasdaq up 1%, Russell 2000 small caps outperforming up 1.6%. Now, Treasury yields relaxing a bit lower, but mostly on the short end uh, as we sort of get a little more confidence that the Fed anticipates three quarter point rate cuts perhaps by the end of this year. The 10 year uh, moving less. So you see a little bit of re-steepening of the curve. Maybe that suggests uh, that the uh, more tolerance for some warmer inflation. But I would say, in general, uh, Chair Powell talks about the balance of risks uh, between employment and inflation roughly equal, but he's not particularly concerned about any of them. So let's get to uh, Josh Brown. He is uh, CEO of Ritholtz Wealth Management, Liz Young, uh, SoFi, uh, head of investment strategy. Just to break this down a little bit, Josh, um, markets seem to take the absence of any hawkish surprise as a, as a positive. It's like we were in a strong yeah. market before. Um, the chair is unconcerned seemingly about the little bit of an uptick in inflation and so therefore kind of game on. Yeah, my big takeaway that is really that they're going to slow the pace of balance sheet runoff, which I found, I guess, to be uh, something unique. Uh, I also think this they're talking quote, about it, but they haven't decided anything. Yet. But it's definitely an indication. I mean, slowing the pace of balance sheet runoff reminds me of uh, when Henry Blodgett was posting all this stuff from Hussman. So somebody said, well, you're going to sell your stocks then if you're so bearish. He said, I'm going to stop reinvesting my right, dividends. Right, right. OK. <laughs> all right. We got it. All right. So that's that's one thing. Here was the other one. This is a quote. The risk is two sided. If we ease too much, we could see higher inflation. If we ease too little, we could risk damage in the economy. OK, thanks for those people who have not been paying attention yeah. to what the balancing act is. There it is. And quite frankly, nothing really seems to have changed to the point on either side of that balancing act to push the Fed. And really, I, I think we're enduring higher 10 year rates fairly well in the broader market, which is certainly not the purview of the Fed. What the 10 year does, you know, they're paying attention. Yeah. Consider this, Mike. Um, you've got seven basis points in the last week. You've got 41 basis points year to date. It's a fairly substantial move in the 10 year. Stocks are weathering that really well. Yeah. So today didn't really give you anything new on that front. And I think the balancing act has to continue. That is true. Although, again, you know, first of all, we always Liz, should uh, throw out the, the little bit of a disclaimer that a lot of times post Fed moves are kind of like whipsaw one way, then the other way. Right now, it doesn't so. seem like there's a lot of room for interpretation here. But, you know, if you look at the um, the summary of economic projections, which came out along with it, they keep the median of three anticipated quarter point cuts by the end of this year. Some of the highs and lows changed in there. So there's a fewer deep doves and, and not as much, uh, you know, in the middle. But I, I guess I would say is it also comes with a higher than anticipated GDP for the year and a slightly higher core uh, PCE inflation. Now, Powell seemed to say, well, that's just kind of marking the market what we know for the first two months here. It's not projecting ahead. But I guess that's understandable the market would take that as uh, a net positive. I, I think it is understandable that the market takes it as a positive, and, and we should, frankly. If you're looking at just the math of it, which had concerned me earlier in the year, the math of them projecting 1.4 percent GDP growth, and we were still supposed to somehow generate double-digit earnings growth, it just didn't make sense. So I think their projection to bring GDP growth up is a positive. Obviously, inflation a little higher, not as much of a positive, but not quite as concerning if everybody still thinks the labor market is going to be strong. People can spend and absorb that inflation if they're employed and they're confident in their wages staying steady. The thing that I think is interesting, they did lower the expected number of cuts in 2025. Now, we're just kind of pushing out the worry into the future even further. So we came into the year thinking we were going to get six cuts. The market has completely weathered that storm, brought it down to three, and been quite resilient yeah. throughout, but lowered what we, we think might happen in 25. Rate-sensitive rate sensitive stocks, though, are moving. Yeah. And I found this really interesting. Uh, the ARC names, well, the, the ARC ETF itself is up three. 3%. Uh, metals and mining up 2%. The regional banks are up 2%. Yeah. Like these, these jumped out at me. Um, and, and then I think if you look at the Russell 2000 on the whole, so you're up 2%. Uh, if you finish the day where we are right now, it's the second best day of the year uh, for that index. So those things were interesting. Also should not be glossed over. While Chair Powell was speaking, we printed a, a new all-time yeah. record high in the S&P 500 above 5,200.